Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to continue working in our face recognition system. So at the end you will be able to scan different images and get bounding boxes around faces if are present in the image. So here we are in our face detection class. This class is a crucial cog in our face recognition engine responsible for analyzing incoming images and identifying the faces uh, within. Uh, we begin by declaring our class face detection and defining its primary components. Um, the constructor accepts uh, four parameters, the main activity, an instance of face detector, and two callback functions for uh, when faces are detected and when a face is cropped. Our class, as you can see, implements the image analysis analyzer interface. This is a pivotal for integrating with the camera ads app API and receiving frames from the camera for real-time analysis. Diving into the analyze function, this is where the magic happens. The function is invoked for each frame provided by the camera. But we are confused developers. So if our analysis is inactive, we responsible release resources by closing the current image ensuring our app remains efficient and responsive. We proceed with our analysis only if the images format aligns with RGBA. So after we confirm we are working with uh, images that maintain high quality and color fidelity crucial for face detection accuracy. We can continue. Upon this confirmation, we create a bitmap from the image buffer, which is a representation our face detector understands. However, images from the camera might not be oriented as we humans perceive them. So, Taking that into consideration, here, uh, here is uh, where our utility function, uh, rotate bitmap, enter, uh, enter the, the limelight. So let's create an extension function for that. The name of the extension file will be bitmap extensions. Into the bitmap extension rotate bitmap is the function we will create this takes two arguments the source bitmap which is the source images where we want to apply the transformation and a rotation degrees which is the angle we want to apply Now our image is correctly oriented for the face detection. After our image has taken a spin to rotate bitmap, it's resizing time. Large images are memory hungry, slowing down processes, especially when real-time response are crucial like a face recognition. 
so taking that into account let's create a new function in shards to do that resize preview image function will be in charge of adjusting the image dimensions to fit our display without losing quality but how does uh, it now the perfect size it is because uh, we are going to take as reference the main activity layout which contains the camera preview view so in order to do that let's create an extension function of the activity here let's create a cornerstone function get target width and height Uh, what this function will do is directly taps into the viewfinder's dimensions, extracting its current width and height. Because these values aren't mere numbers, they, they are the actual pixel dimension uh, of our display area. What we are doing basically is align our image processing to the device display's capabilities. This is crucial for the CRIPS presentation and accurate analysis in real-time scenarios. Diving back into the face detection class, here target size get its value from get target with height. A function we explored earlier, so uh, we know it's crucial part of our process because uh, this dictates the optimal dimension for our image analysis to be effective. Next, we calculate the scale factor. This is determined by comparing the preview image dimension with our target values. Ensuring the image scales properly without losing crucial data for the phase detection process. The create scale, scale bitmap function here uh, then adjust our image size based on this scale factor, achieving the necessary balance between quality and uh, performance. Now, moving forward, it's time to create a function to process uh, the image. In order to do that, let's create a function called process image. And here, we will receive um, as parameter the bitmap we with all the transformation we already applied so basically here we convert our now resized bitmap into an input image which is the way the ML kit uh, requires for its phase detection process. Now, we have to check 
if our image is not null so after confirming our image is not null it's time to set up our graphic overlay this ui component is key for drawing bounding boxes around detected faces So let's create the graphic overlay class, which basically is a custom view. So that's the reason uh, we need to extend this class from view. And this is where we'll draw the graphics for the face bounding boxes on top of the camera's view. We start by defining some properties, some useful properties, for example, the lock variable in charge of handling the concurrence from different threads to uh, mutable variables. So this ensures the mutable variables are trade safe. This is useful for the camera and how the graphics are updated. We also have other properties, like preview width and preview height, for example, which store our camera previews uh, dimensions. And also two others, the width scale factor and height scale factor used for scaling graphic coordinates. So these four are really important in order to coordinate uh, how the graphics coordinates are translated from the camera preview to the overlay to the overlay view. The facing variable keeps track of which camera front or back is in use. In this case, we define the back camera as the default one. And now graphics is a collection of drawable items. It's our tool for managing what needs to be drawn on the overlay. Actually, we don't have this class, so it's time to create this class as well. So let's do that. Let's delve into the graphic class. It's an abstract class that any graphic drawn on our graphic overlay must stand. Its graphic needs to implement the draw function. This method defines how the graphic is rendered on the canvas. Well, the class also contains helper functions for scaling and translating coordinates, ensuring graphics are positioned correctly regardless of the camera orientation and the overlay's dimension, as I said before. Now, we need two other functions, the translate X and translate Y functions, adjust the graphic coordinate. And this is particularly useful, for example, when we are dealing with a front-facing camera. 
the translate add function mirrors the add coordinates so this accounts for the mirror unit fed in the camera preview But actually, we are only dealing with the back camera, so only applies the else case. But you can try uh, changing the main camera. Uh, finally, pause invalidate is a handy function that prompts the overlay to redraw itself meaning our graphics get updated so picking back up from our graphic overlay we need to declare the clear function which is pretty star uh, straightforward because basically what does is wipes our graphics from our our overlay now with add function we can introduce a new graphic into our set this is useful for dynamically handling the graphics as we process uh, camera input. NetApp set camera info allow us to update camera properties within our overlay. It's essential for keeping the overlay's dimension consistent uh, with the camera fit. Now, we need to override the onDraw methods where the magic happens. Here, the canvas draws uh, draw, uh, each graphic. This method ensures our graphics adjust based on the overlay's dimension. The width scale factor and height scale factor are particularly important. They scale the graphics based on the overlay's current dimension versus the camera's preview size. Yeah, and that wrap up our graphic overlay class. So what it does it manage the graphics we overlay in on our camera feed handling the drawing and transformations let's dive right into our layout file designed to display the camera feed and overlay graphics in real time focus on the preview view with the id viewfinder this is where our app shows the camera fit and it's set to occupy the entire screen. Next is the graphic overlay, which is the custom view we just created with the ID graphic overlay. And this is the superstar that uh, sits on top of the camera fit and displays our, our graphics. After we validate if our image is not null, then um, we continue with uh, setup the camera info on the graphic overlay 
and this is crucial for later drawing tasks. Next, we use the ML Kids Face Detector to, well, detect faces. It's like handing over a photo to a detective and saying, find me all the faces. Now, uh, what if the detective succeed and find all the faces or not? And so for that reason, we need to add functions for these three different listeners on success, failure and complete. So if the detective succeed, that's where handle face detection success function enter in, in action. Uh, if we have faces, the function first check if the list of faces is not empty, indicating a successful detection, of course. And if so, it triggers uh, the on face detected call box with the list of faces. This call box can be used to perform various actions such as updating the UI, which will be the case. When we iterate over each detected phase, for every phase, we attempt to crop the phase from the original image using the crop phase bitmap. which is uh, where uh, precision uh, is the key, obviously. Basically, what a crop face bitmap function does, or its purpose, is to accurately extract a face from the original image based on the face's um, bounding bots, resulting in a new bitmap of the face. As I mentioned before, the return uh, bitmap generated by the crop face bitmap function will only contain the face detected or the faces uh, into the provided images. So now it's time to propagate the bitmap back to the UI through the on face cropped uh, callback and that's it basically the engine of our face detection system now moving back to the main activity it's time to link our face detection engine, which is the face detection class, with our, our main activity, which is responsible for the UI stuff. So let's create this function, configure UI. Uh, and here, uh, let's create an instance of face detection.
here we need to fit everything the instant needs to start identifying faces like for example the contents in this case the activity the face detector and also the callbacks when a face uh, or faces are detected and uh, where a face is dropped Now let's zoom into the on face detected uh, function. Basically, what this function does is checks if any face are found. If not, it simple tells the user no face found. In order to do that, we will display an alert message. Uh, but let's create an a generic function. So we can reuse this function every time we need to display an error message or, or something similar. Now, in the case when a face or multiple faces are detected, it's one it's uh, outlined on the screen. You know, bounding boxes appears around the face. But how this is possible? By using the face contour graphic class. This is the last piece uh, that will allow us to do that. So let's create our face contour graphic class, which will be of type graphic. This class will implement the graphic. No, will extend because the graphic is an abstract class, by the way. And in the companion object, we need to define the thickness of the bots that will surround its face and an array of colors that these boxes can be and the number of colors as well represents the number of faces we can track in a single frame so here we also keep track of which colors uh, we are currently using Eight different colors, eight different faces that we can track. This face variable represent the current phase displayed and the current color index represents the, uh, the color that we are going to assign to the boundary bots around the current phase Now, the bots paint, this is the artist that paints our bonding bots. So in this init, uh, this init block, the bots paint is told which color to use and how thick the line should be. So, uh, it cycles through different colors for its face detected, making it easier to differentiate between multiple faces. 
Uh, with the update phase, our class gets the last news on where faces are in the camera feed. And when a new face is found, updated face ensures the graphic is redraw, keeping the visual fresh. Finally, uh, the draw function, uh, when it's called, it checks if there is a face to draw. If there is, it calculates where the bot should appear on the screen and then voila. It draws a color fuel rectangle around the face. Here we are, we are using different functions we defined before in our graphic uh, class. And just like that, every time a face appears in front of the, of the camera, face counter graphic draws a need color uh, bots around it, all thanks to this line of code. So for every uh, face found, we create a new instance of face counter graphic. I think this is not optimal by the way. So feel free to change it. Feel free to define a global face control graphic, maybe. Uh, with each iteration, our app visually updates uh, to display those colorful bonding boxes around every new face detected. So it's a dynamic process, continuously adjusting as faces enter and leave the frame. Now let's speak into the on face crop function. This is spots where we handle what happens after we have successfully cropped a face from our camera input. And these functions start and stop in the face detection will be useful in future uh, uh, videos. Uh, because will allow us to um, stop or restart the face analysis. But now let's uh, keep that as a to-do work. Uh, next. Next is the on destroy method. Think of this as the cleanup crew. When our app is closing, it's crucial to free up resources so that our device doesn't waste memory or battery. And uh, yeah, that basically is. So it's time to show you how the app looks and feels because I wanna complete my, my promise. So let's check if everything looks fine. Let's try to run. Uh, okay, it's running. Now let's try to uh, to test 
with a face image. Okay. Let's focus the camera on the face image. Uh, mm. It's not what I am expected. I mean, the expected is to see uh, bounding bots around the face. So something is not uh, working. Okay, it looks like uh, we forgot to uh, change the the analyzer uh, in the face uh, in the camera configuration in the camera analyzer configuration because we we need to include the the engine we just created, which is the face detection class. So hopefully now it will work. Let's try again. Let's focus and here we go. We have the bounding bots around the face, but it's not refreshing. I mean, it's freezy. Mm, this is probably because in the cropped, uh, uncropped face, uh, we include uh, the the face detection stop, which basically stops uh, the face analyzer engine. So let's try again and comment that. Let's focus. Here we go. Now the bonding box is refreshing which is the expected behavior. So as I promised, now you will be able to scan different images that contains uh, faces and you will see bounding boxes around the faces. 